Toto, não. O professor Roca, eu sou tão maior que foi o nosso colega aqui no IMPA, atualmente trabalha na, na, no IME, no Instituto de Matemática e Estatística da USP, né, em São Paulo, e ele vai falar sobre matemática, o aspecto of the differential equations of principal curvature lines and the work of Carlos Gutierrez, uma palestra em homenagem ao Gutierrez, também foi nosso colega e, e também trabalhou no, no ICMC em São Carlos. Né? Então, um grande prazer. Sou tu, Ana. Thank you, Gugu for the kind words, and uh, let me uh, begin by, by saying that uh, in 80, 1981, uh, in the ceremony, or in the meeting concerning about the opening of this building of IMPA, uh, the work which I have taken as organizing center for my presentation of Gutierrez's contribution, and uh, there was the first, the first, this was the first opportunity, in this meeting, there was, it was the first opportunity to present these works to the a wide audience. The, the, the month before, in the Brazilian Mathematical Colloquium in Pozos de Caldas, there was a announcement of this, in a short communication, uh, that is in the proceedings of this Brazilian Mathematical Colloquium of eight, 1981. So, uh, I, I will begin with a short uh, presentation of photos and tell very few words about uh, the particular uh, aspects of the life of Carlos Gutierrez and will be concerned mainly today in the mathematical aspects. So, uh, Carlos Gutierrez uh, is uh, beside Peixoto and uh, near Marco Antonio Teixeira, myself and Ronaldo Garcia. This represents four generations of mathematicians, Peixoto, Sotomayor, Gutierrez, and Garcia. Garcia will appear also in my uh, presentation. This is uh, Carlos Gutierrez uh, in 202 uh, on the occasion of receiving the, uh, the, the, co the commemoration, what is the name of this? Uh, commenda, a, a, a distinction, a recognition for his merit in mathematics from the Brazilian government. Orden Nacional do Merito Científico. And this is the, in 1964, uh, almost a child, Carlos Gutierrez, graduating from the uh, school for high school teachers uh, in Peru called La Cantuta, the place where this school is located, and uh, where he's graduating and uh, going to work as a high school teacher in Ayacucho, in the highlands of Peru. Uh, so, uh, Carlos Gutierrez didn't have the standard uh, bachelor in mathematics degree. He was a, th he had a three years course for a high school teacher. Afterwards, he uh, uh, took uh, uh, seminars and uh, activities uh, which had the objective of training these high school teachers and uh, select those who were, uh, who, who could recognize it as being able to go beyond the high school teaching and to go into really more advanced mathematics. I have written an, an obituary of Carlos Gutierrez in, in the publishing Mathematica Universitaria, I think, yes, and uh, also in my web page. Uh, Two, two brothers and Carlos Gutierrez's mother. And this is a very nice photo. And this is the, the whole family uh, of Carlos Gutierrez Vidalón. Vidalón is the last name of his mother and the, the, the small children in, in climbing stairs and his mother, father, and older sister. It's a, a nice, nice family. Carlos Gutierrez's father was a medical doctor. 
So uh, this is the, the personal aspects of Gutierrez. Here I have, I have, I have put uh, the list of five papers that uh, Lattes Curriculum Vitae requests from people in the systems of research in Brazil uh, and to select them with a star, uh, which uh, says that uh, the researcher considers this paper as some <coughs> special work that uh, the, he wrote. So uh, the number in the very left is the number in the ordering of uh, or order of the curriculum, and does not have a meaning. And the number in in violet number violet uh, is in the left in, pa in parentheses is the citation number uh, given by Batsinet in 2012. An, an occasion in which I g gave a lecture. And another uh, record of this number is in brown. And it, this was in 2018. And uh, this is, uh, shows that uh, his uh, papers, the papers that he uh, liked best, bet better, uh, were, were being uh, cited. And uh, in a sense, his, he was living mathematically. Uh, this is a very strict uh, record of citations given by my net. Other, other institutions uh, give more uh, citation numbers to, to these papers. Uh, and uh, the, the, the only one that preserved the, the citation along the years was the last one. But this was a, a paper that Carlos Gutierrez liked uh, a lot that of his production, because this, this uh, was the, what he say, could save of his attack to the Poincaré conjecture. No, we were, <laughs> he was almost uh, giving a, a proof of Poincaré conjecture, and uh, he himself found a gap in the proof. No? And, uh, uh, but this, this uh, paper about knots no? was what uh, remained of solid knowledge. And uh, the first most quoted is related to the paper that I will, I, I presented here in this lecture in, in 1981 in this same building. So it is like a, a 37 years ago, a way back to give the lecture in the same auditorium. No? There were people from everywhere in the world in the, a very, very big meeting in dynamical systems. Uh, marking the opening of this new building of IMPA. <coughs> and so this is the, the paper that he has, uh, that has more, more citations. Uh, I will comment how, how this lecture uh, was, uh, what, what, what the motivation to, be, to give this lecture uh, later. But uh, other, other students of Pape Gutierrez will give lectures about the, the subject number two, which is the global asymptotic stability conjecture, called the Marcus Yamavi con conjecture. Uh, we, we had seminars on this conjecture in, in, in IMPA, when Carlos Gutierrez was here. And, uh, but uh, he had other students that collaborated with him when he moved to San Carlos. And the, uh, there we'll, give, we'll uh, have lectures uh, on this different subjects of his contributions. So I, I will go on, and uh, I, I claim it with this uh, quantitative analysis that uh, Carlos Gutierrez's work was being, was alive. This was my intention to, to do this. This appears in a essay uh, about Carlos Gutierrez published in ResearchGate, no? which is more, more generous in giving a quotation, citation numbers, eh? gives uh, br more broadly distributed. Opa. Now, now I, I am coming 
that here my lecture is organized in, with two, two ti timelines. No? I, am, I am talking about the first timeline, which is, is this one, that de depending how far you can go, I, I cannot go too far because of time limitations, but uh, how, what are the, 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 the landmarks, the, the mathematical landmarks that lead to the paper that I am talking about here, presented in 1981. Yeah? And then there is another timeline here, con continuing here. And this is the reaching 1989, which is the thesis at IMPA of uh, Ronaldo Garcia. After, after that, he was my collaborator and then also collaborated with Carlos. Uh, and what is this thesis about? While the paper of 1982 deals with surfaces immersed, immersed in classical Euclidean three-dimensional space, this more courageous work, and more original work, deals with hypersurfaces immersed in four-dimensional space. You increase in one the number of dimensions in the domain and in the counter domain. And so I, I, I will discuss here, I hope it becomes clear, what is the cost of this increase in one, what is the qualitative cost, the mathematical uh, complexity of the problem by increasing in one the dimension. Of course, these things are not new because in dynamical systems, the increasing in one the dimension of the domain really marks a great step. So here are the two papers that were then published after this lecture. Uh, one in asterisk, the, 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 the year after, uh, about the openness and of the space of a structurally stable configurations. So here uh, we come to a, a, a name, no? structural stability, which uh, is common after the work of Peixoto, which is one of my landmarks here, I don't know where I to put it. The work of Peixoto. Topology. One. No? And it uh, deals with a structurally stable differential equations, ordinary differential equations on surfaces. Uh, so this is a, a, a landmark for, for uh, motivation of this work that I, I, I will explain what is it about if you are not familiar with this uh, terminology. Okay. Uh, questions are welcome. And uh, I brought here three books that uh, present this theory uh, before 209. Which is the Colo a Colloquium Brasi Brasileiro de Matemática, Brazilian Mathematical Colloquium. And so uh, up to this date, I have, uh, you can ask any question that I have here, the Bibles, and I feel confident to answer the questions. Uh, and at, at that, after that, I can study the questions and answer by email later. <laughs> OK. So here, uh, I, I give a, a number of conditions here. Uh, those who are familiar with Peixoto uh, paradigm, with Peixoto paradigm, the of uh, 
openness, density, and genericity. It is not properly, properly uh, due to Peixoto completely, no? It comes from Andronov, Pontriagli, 1937 to 1945, probably, of Andronov, Pontreagin, Leontovich, names associated to what is called the Gorky School in Russia. The Gorky School. So uh, this, this uh, contributions of the Gorky School has a lot to do with Peixoto's paradigm. And uh, I consider these contributions that I will uh, at least give more details later, not, not much, because I, my subject is very, very large already. Uh, uh, because the, the landmark has, the, has this, the, the, the status of a landmark. Hmm? Uh, because they, 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 they put uh, solid, in solid basis the theoretical interests of questions of a structural stability and bifurcations. Uh, not, not only examples of bifurcations, but a theory that would uh, rationally attack the problem of explaining the qualitative change that happens in dynamical systems. So, uh, I think this is a very important landmark, has a very important landmark. Okay, I, I will come to this point in, in very, very, very soon, because that's that's for this main for the. So I I want to explain these terms, and these terms are important to understand what was the the. The, the first uh, work that uh, I will, I will uh, attack uh, to in connection with Carlos Gutierrez's contribution. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I am, uh, as you see here, uh, we have the, the people in dynamical systems coming here. No, this, this line, uh, white line, is the dynamical systems mm -hmm. or, differ or ordinary differential equations. No, this white line. And uh, these, these uh, terms here, uh, Gugu, are related to, to geometry, to classical geometry. And what is classical geometry? Her classical geometry is the geometry that you can study with the combination of the first and second fundamental forms. So this is surfaces in Euclidean space. And I, I here, uh, why, why I regard this, this as, as, a, as a landmark with uh, no false modesty? Because here is another line, which is the line of geometry. And this line of geometry crosses this line of dynamical systems precisely at this, at this point. And Darbu, the Darbu is are about, about here. Darbu was a contemporary of Poincaré. Poincaré was around here. In 1981, a series of papers on related to the qualitative theory of differential equations, celestial mechanics, stability, uh, ergodic questions, and so on. So Poincaré, contemporary of Darbu, uh, interconnected. We are not uh, distant from each other. Darbu was uh, the one that wrote the eloge of the work of Poincaré when Poincaré passed away. Eh? 
Uh, so these points are the Darbuxian points, and, and Darbu was the first to uh, study, well, not the first to study a theory that, that presented results that could be considered as a theory for lines of curvature that I will define now. Lines of curvature are the lines on a surface along which a surface is bent extremely, maximally or minimally. And these points and these, uh, these fields, these lines have singularities, and these singularities are the Darboxian singularities. So let, let me, let me uh, give names here, and this is the first time that appear mathematical terms. So uh, Darboxian are a type of umbilic points. And the Darboxian points you can consider as the analogous to the hyperbolic points in the theory of Poincaré. So here, uh, what Poincaré has the hyperbolic singularities, saddles, nodes, focus, Darbu has here the, the what, I, what, I, what I call is the, the Darbuks and umbilics, D1, D2, and D3. I, I don't put the exact date. It is uh, 1977. I, I don't, don't have the, will appear the exact date there in my, my references. But, but this is uh, in, in 19, uh, maybe 80, 96, no? in, the, in, the, in the memoir, uh, the 18, 18? 96, around 18, it's certain, but for sure. OK. so. Uh, uh, but it's about because uh, Darbu was aware he uses the, the theory of Poincaré of saddles, nodes, and focus. Focus, I would say. Uh, what? Is there a precise dictionary between these notions? I, I will tell it, yes. Okay. Yes, in a sense. Yeah. So uh, let, let me go on. I, I am talking about uh, geometric objects, uh, pictures, no? but. Uh, now I will, I will give a more precise definition. Let's see what we have here now. Con continue to define four conditions. On the singularities, no, uh, we, the, so here we rec recognize a, an, an analogy with Peixoto's paradigm about the singularities, a hypothesis, about the, the, the periodic solutions, also a hypothesis, which is hyperbolic, repeated here for Darbuxian. Uh, cycles for, for periodic orbits of the uh, principal curvature lines, and then two more conditions. I, I will come back to these conditions after I say more. Here are the Darbuxian umbilics in a surface. I think it's a good idea to give some mathematical definitions. I, I will, I, uh, I, I will uh, by the moment, pass away these, these, these slides. These are, these, are, these are slides that are related to the geometry part, which I, I am calling in, in, in yellow. No? What is green? Green. The geometry part. No? Here, this, all this, I will come back into this, because this is concerned with the classical geometry part of my, line, my timeline. And to see that this crosses where I, I, I am claiming that it crosses here, I, I will go. Monge, some other important uh, black reference here. Dupin, you see here that I, I, I are beginning to have curves in the, in the <coughs> on, on a surface, the, like the ellipsoid. And uh, there you see one point, two points in fact, of in, the, in the convex ellipsoid, which has an umbilic point of type D1. You see? Uh, this is the ellipsoid that, according to Monge, has four umbilic points, two in the northern hemisphere, two in the southern hemisphere. And these points are Darbuxian of type 1. That means that they have one separatrix entering for east and one separatrix for each other. Eh? 
And there is another, another family of lines. Right? Here's one family of lines, like this. And here is another family of lines that you see like this. Opa. Uh, I, I will continue, or maybe, or, or maybe draw a picture, a better, a, a, a better picture here. There is a, a singular point. There is a line entering another family of lines like this, and another family of lines like this. This is a D1 Darbuxian point. Of what? Of the umbilical uh, singularities. So I, I, I will give more precise definition. Eh? What are we talking about? No? So uh, and what is uh, my, 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 my subject? Eh? Here I will, I, I will give a, a more careful definition here. So we, we have a manifold, M, a two-dimensional compact manifold, smooth manifold. which is oriented and namely this is a, a surface an oriented surface this is a, what we call a surface and uh, here oriented means that uh, each each point of this surface has a, a chart a local chart and you can say which charts are positive and which charts are negative, and the positive ones change coordinates with positive Jacobian. There's, a, there's an oriented surface. Like what? Like the sphere, like the torus, like the double torus, like the triple torus, etc. So all classified by the connectivity, which is uh, the number of holes. Uh, that you, the number of handles that you attach to a sphere. So these are, uh, this is space. And our, our, our space, functional space, lives here. Here is Rn, R3 in this case. And here is the space of immersions, immersions of M into R3. And one element here is a, so it is a mapping, a mapping that maps this surface into R3 you know, so that it still preserves the tangent plane. Here has a tangent plane, an abstract tangent plane. And here, it has a, a tangent plane, Euclidean, which is oriented by a normal. It has a normal also. Yeah? The normal in the image represents the orientation in the domain. And so, the... We cut here, and the lines of curvature are the solutions. It's a way to, to look at this, these lines. I, I, I mentioned the notion of, of curvature. Uh, along these lines, the curvature is uh, bent extremely, maximally or minimally. But these lines are also the these curves are the integrals of a, a, an equation, which is called the Rodriguez equation. Rodriguez differential equation. Which says the following. Eh? Rodriguez equation is, is as follows. Eh? You take the derivative of the normal of, of the immersion. Here is the immersion. It has a normal. This normal has an equation in terms of the, of the immersion, no? has an equation. And then this equation is evaluated at the point P 
and in a direction v. The derivative of n at the point p in the direction v. And also, you map uh, here a vector. Here, the vectors are here, no? somewhere here, no? three. And you map the, by the immersion, you map the derivative of alpha at p in the direction v also. Mm -hmm. And uh, a direction v is principal if these two vectors are parallel. Right? And then the, the, the derivative of n, which is a unitary vector, drops here. The derivative of alpha, which is evaluated here no, at the point in this direction, also drop here somewhere. These, di these directions are parallel or, or, or not parallel. When they are parallel, you say that these directions are principal. Those v, which make this parallel. Eh? So this, this has an equation, which uh, I, I like to write this as follows. Eh? These two vectors, this live in the tangent plane here, in the image tangent plane, so to say. And this equation can be written as follows. In a, using a scalar products, dn alpha p at v wedge product. By free, we have a, a, a wedge product here because the domain space, the, the, the image space is also oriented, so it has a wedge product. d alpha at p at v. So this, this vector, which is the wedge product, is parallel to the normal, like this or like this. Eh? So I, I can wedge this with the normal and make the scalar product. So the equation of Rodriguez is equivalent to this scalar equation. In fact, it, it, it is only one scalar equation that is quadratic in V. No? You see that this is linear in V. This is linear in V. This is a, 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 a product. No? And so this is quadratic in V. No? So, uh, so uh, equal zero, this quadratic equation over p, now I, I come back here, and I, I take my m here. No? Over each p, you have the space of directions. This is the projective, the, the projective plane over p, the projective line over p. So for each line, q, you have another projective line, p over q. And when the point moves in the surface, you have these lines which form the projective bundle. So this quadratic equation in V, no? in fact, is not a vectorial equation. It is a, 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 a it, it uh, does not do not uh, change with orientation changes. No? If you have V by minus V, V by minus V here change the sign by minus here again by minus in the product, it is the same. So this does not depend on the direction of the vector. It is. A, depends on the direction of the line only. For v and minus v, is satisfied or not satisfied? So this lives in the projective space. So this quadratic equation has two roots here, in general. Or when they generate, it has a whole line of roots, which I will put here in. In violet, no? violet. All that means that this equation is identically satisfied. No? These points where this is always satisfied for all directions are called the umbilic points. These are the umbilic points. No? So, in terms of, of differential equations, this direction you can skip right like a, a vector with variable directions. No? And so you have 
a differential equation. This is a, a vector here. No vector here. And so if, if you write, eliminate the vector from this equation and write as a differential equation, you see that this equation is written as follows. As a determinant, minus dv. This is the, this is the coordinate, dv, the coordinate in here, a, a positive coordinate, dv square <coughs> minus du dv, du square, e, f, g, e, f, g. So if you uh, change this v by dv, du dv, and write this, this equation in terms of the first fundamental form, here I'm talking, the first fundamental form, and these are the coefficients of the second fundamental form. Don't, so this equation is the equation of the principal directions. They, they have two roots only. Or everything is root is a root, so this means that these are parallel. So over this uh, projective plane, a, an immersion defines two surfaces over m almost all the points. No? This is the, the this is a, 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 a surface. No? This is another surface. This continues. Somehow it passes uh, uh, be, be, be behind the, the, this line, and this is another. Okay. And these surfaces is, is def are defined everywhere, eh? in two, the two in, as two, two of them. And they are orthogonal. This is uh, what the uh, one exercise shows. And these surfaces approach this line of umbilics. Of course, the lines of umbilic can be everything. You know, the sphere, for instance, the sphere has all the lines of all the lines are umbilic. So the sphere can be represented as something really, really violent. Yeah? The sphere is completely violent, completely umbilic. Yeah? So uh, these these lines, I, I I will give a geometric definition of the Darboxian umbilics. Yeah? These lines. Uh, these surfaces are smooth surfaces because the, the, the roots are given regular by, by a regular equation. By, no, but the, two, the, the two roots are uh, transversal roots. They, are, they, they, they define blue surface and red surface as a graph, local graph, over the most points. Yeah? Yes, uh, and here you have the red line which is one of the principal directions. And here you have the blue line. Where is the blue line? My blue line, OK, here, the blue line. OK, so since these are graphs, you can lift. Geometrically, you can lift this line here. And then, opa. And then you can lift this yellow line here. And so you see, you study, how these lines that are defined everywhere beyond the, umbilic, beyond the umbilic line, how these lines approach this vertical line. And these differential equations, this define a, a number of points. And you prove that these lines, blue line and red line, have a regular limit arriving to the umbilic line. And this regular limit, it, it depends on, defines a, a extend here, has two extensions, no? the red one and the blue one. I, I am giving a very geometric definition, say here another line. No? It happens that they are like this. No? And so uh, these lines approach this umbilic line, and they, they have uh, regular limits. No? A, a line is there, it approaches vertical, becomes vertical, almost vertical, vertical, and boom, approaches the line. 
except as at a special points. You have here a special points where this limit does not hold. No? This has a special meaning and because these points define the umbilic separatrices. And around this point, the differential equations of the lines of curvature, these, these two split in, in, two tar, in two parts, approach to points which are the Poincaré singularities. Yeah? And so here is a, a connection of the, the Arbuxian umbilics and the Poincaré singularities in, in geometric terms without uh, performing a calculation. So uh, what, is, what is a Darbuxian point in terms of Poincaré singularities? A Darbuxian point is one which, when you perform this operation and you perform these limits, you get over here only saddles and nodes in Poincaré terminology. Mm -hmm. oh, this has a analytical expression. No? Thank you for your question, Gugu, because this gives me an opportunity to explain something that uh, is in, in the should come first to, to, to say what we are talking about. No? I, I give here a, a handmade equation, then I will project some slides about the D1 point. Eh? D1 point, I, I will show it here. I hope uh, this is not too messy. Here is the umbilic point. Here is the plane. I, I will write the red D1 point. Here you have a line. This part of the surface. This is almost a representation of infinity. This And here you have the blue part. It's like a helix, helicoid. So the surface really is like a helicoid here, as approaching for, for a D1 point. So uh, it has only one singularity, which is a saddle. And this, this saddle comes here, goes to infinity, comes back here, it approaches infinity, and then it comes here and grows. No? So this, is, this represents the D1 point. Mm -hmm. so, so the D1 has a, a uh, and now uh, in equations, this operation of associating to a quadratic equation, this quadratic equation no? is, is uh, represented by a ordinary differential equation of order one. No? This has, if you, if you write in terms of, of uh, differential equation, dB square, du square, uh, L plus M, this is another M, another L, dV, du plus N, so this is uh, this is the equation you write like this, no? and then and then you you uh, you have these numbers l which come from this calculation, and with this this coefficient you can really uh, give analytic hypothesis, no, to, to recognize which point you are talking about. So d one, d two, d three, you can distinguish one from each other, and uh, so on. So I am talking about here the, 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 the ellipsoid of three different axes. And this is the one that, uh, and here is the presentation of this ellipsoid given by Dupin. No? That is in, in, my, in my geometry timeline. What is my number? What is my, my color here? It's a green. Darbu. You see that Dupin 
Liu Pang in my chronology, in my chronology of landmarks, green, 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 I see. Liu Pang is around here. This I remember, uh, 18, 18. Here is Liu Pang. Monge is uh, 1796. This is Monge. I, I will stop here in my uh, chronology because Monge was the one that first described a, a principal configuration. What is a principal configuration? A, a surface together with the umbilic points that you separate, you, you distinguish them by these equations, by, by the annihilation of the first and second fundamental form. And you have two line fields here, no? well, as I, I was saying, no? besides you have two line fields. No? You integrate the line field either, either here or here, you have two of them separated here in, in one each surface. So you can integrate this and project down, and this is one of the families of curves, which are the integral curves of a field of directions, say the maximal curvature directions. And the other is minimal curvature direction. So the principal configuration is a surface of a surface. Né? You have an immersion, and you have the surface, and you have the umbilic points, and then you have the principal configuration associated to the, the largest, and then you have the other principal configuration goes. So a, a principal, a principal configuration of a surface immersion of the immersion of a surface. No, each time you you change the, the immersion, you change the principal configuration. So this is says how the surface is curved in space. So a principal configuration is the sister of a flow in dynamical systems. No? The, the dynamical systems have a flow. He says how the solutions spread in the surface and how they flow. No? And the principal configuration is how much it curves no? in each direction. No? There are other structures that are sisters, also principal configurations, like the rarefaction curves in the theory of Riemann in, uh, problems. No? and also in the elasticity. The stress and the strain are tensors, similar to the tensors of quadrat uh, second fundamental form. The curvature tensor, the normal curvature tensor, is uh, very, very, very similar. It's, it's a symmetric tensor uh, as, as the, the stress tensor. Right? And, and this, uh, this is important for interpretations. And you, have this, you find these pictures of the Darbuxian umbilics some of them in, the, in books about uh, uh, elasticity, the how, how the thin uh, laminas, thin sheets, no, are compressed or, or expanded. Eh? Let me continue. And, and each time I, I go advancing, here I said Monge. The ellipsoid, Dupin has a theory. And what is the theory of Dupin? Dupin says that if the surfaces are triply orthogonal, like this, no? a family of triply orthogonal surfaces, ellipsoids, e es ellipsoids, compact ellipsoids, paraboloids of one sheet, hy no, sorry, hy hyperboloids of one sheet. I'm talking about this. Hyperboloids of one sheet are, are these ones. You see this comes here. And para hyperboloids of two sheets, this and the other sheet here. No? So Dupin says that if you have this triple orthogonal system of surfaces to discover which are the lines of curvature of the central one, for instance, what you have to do is to take the, the families which are orthogonal to, to this one, in the inside these this, uh, objects that are mutually orthogonal, and intersect. No? But intersect means to 
uh, solve an equation because, and this is the integral, first integral of an equation. So this is this um, theorem of Dupin is a, is a, like an integrability theory. So by, by looking at these this classical results with the terminology of dynamical systems, you see that uh, germs of theory are present in classical, very classical uh, studies of geometry. Yeah? So this is the integrable case, Darbu, analysis of the work, work of Darbu, even if you don't, <laughs> he doesn't mention the word that I am uh, invoking now, like genericity, no? but analysis of his work says that Darbu was studying the generic umbilic point for analytic surfaces. No? As Juan Carré was studying with this condition, the generic singularities, equilibria for planar differential equations. No? Here, a reading of this classical literature with uh, modern slang, mo modern uh, terminology, uh, leads you to say that maybe it is interesting to investigate what are the surfaces that uh, their principal configuration, this structure formed by the fact that it's immersed, uh, preserves qualitatively under the formation of the surface. Né? You have the surface changing with temperature, if you are fond of uh, physical interpretations, and you see how these curves are mentioned. And, and if, you, if this is the stress of, of, a, of, a, of an experiment, or, or then, then really this, this matters for, for application, for instance. Eh? No? Okay. Uh, now I was talking about, I mentioned already this, Poincaré and the qualitative theory of differential equations. Uh, and here is a, a, a pictorial uh, a slide on, on, on the objects of the Poincaré uh, uh, qualitative theory, saddles, nodes, focus. And Poincaré has, sorry, has also important things that are not present in the classical opa, geometry analysis, no? which is the recurrence, or like the ergodic, the ergodic flows in the torus no, here, and uh, this this global global system, global questions that Poincaré uh, investigated no, in several instances uh, do not uh, do not have counterpart in the classical differential geometry analysis. No. Darbu was interested in the analogous of this for umbilical, so to say, but was not interested or didn't consider the analogous of this for uh, principal configurations. These, these questions of uh, uh, density of possible periodic, possible principal lines, not, these are not maybe, uh, come essentially important in this analysis that is presented in this work, which uh, attacks the problem and in a sense gives a solution maybe not the best solution, but a solution for the characterization of the immersions of a compact surface into Euclidean space, whose principal configuration, this, this partition of the space in two nets, maximal principal, maximal and minimal, plus the umbilic points the spread there, have this structure topologically invariant under perturbations of the surface. Yeah? For instance, no, uh, uh, here uh, a very, very, very uh, in, uh, naive example. No? The sphere has the, the principal configuration is only points. Huh? But if you change this sphere to an ellipsoid of three different axes, Monge says that the principal configuration looks like this. And the other, the other looks like this. Yeah? So it's small, oh sorry, etc. So it's small perturbation of, of the ellipsoid 
moves the, the qualitative uh, notion of curvature very deeply. No? Uh, uh, this very naive example shows that the, uh, the ellipsoid is also uh, stable, uh, structurally stable inside the world of quadrics, no? because the elli uh, an ellipsoid is, is an ellipsoid because it is compact, no? it is given by a positive definite quadratic equation, and the axis of the equations are different. No? So this is a, 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 a conditions that depend on these coefficients that define the, the, the ellipsoid. No? So these are open and these are stable. However, if you change the ellipsoid by cubic terms, then this condition, this structure given by Monge, this ellipsoid with three different axes, is perturbed. It changes uh, topologically. No? And this, uh, uh, these bunches of periodic orbits and the ellipsoid, no, you see, these are like an annuli of periodic orbits. This is stopped to be annuli, it may be get uh, limit cycles. Eh? So, uh, uh, here is uh, that I, I now more precisely what I, I claim to. Juan Edarbu describes the genetic umbilic points, sorry for the mistake here, on analytic surfaces. He was aware of the Poincaré theory about singularity of differential equations, and here's the, the paper of Poincaré, uh, of Darbu, in, in a second edition. Eh? Sorry for the mistakes. Eh? I, I must say that I, I must apologize because the, this, uh, these uh, uh, mistakes in, in, in typing are, are uh, the fact that my, my Macintosh uh, Hard, uh, had a, a collapse of the hard disk. And I, I had to take, uh, my, my friends helped me to transform P all PDFs in, in PowerPoints by, by a, a translator. And so the translator of the PDFs passes almost correctly, but introduces some mistakes. So these are our, our mistakes <laughs> that I attribute this to, this, to this fact. And this, this continues to, to increase these mistakes. So I, I will apologize in advance before. But uh, uh, the, the complicated formulas that are, are put here as a challenge for further study for the young people uh, really will not matter much because they are complicated anyway. But the simpler <laughs> should, should be correct. I, I apologize for, for this mistake. I have the. So I discussed this. No? What I am saying here, let me read, to, read this. The study of periodic isolated lines of curvature, principal cycles, and dense non-trivial principal lines was developed in the works of Gutierrez and Soto, myself, printed in 1982 after 19 years, 19 years later, the publication of Peixoto's work outlined below. So here I, I go to, I, I'm talking about this work where these questions of genericity, uh, of singularities, periodic orbits, and possibility of recurrences uh, appear in, uh, explicitly in this, in this paper. No? Also a, a, a thing that appears in this paper is the, a proof of Darbu theorem, Darbu structure theorem for umbilic points for finite class of difference, differentiability because the proof of Darbu is for analytic class and a very, very uh, intriguing proof. Uh, very, very few, very few people understand this proof. Right? Maybe, maybe some details are beyond the, the present human <laughs> fellows. Well, I, 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 I was talking here about Peixoto and the, the uh, previous generation uh, about the uh, structural stability and the North uh, I, I These are most familiar, no? For differ ordinary differential equations. Uh, and I have, I have, I put here two landmarks for what follows. Peixoto theorem, no? in 1962, and 
the work, uh, classical work of SML for the growing from dimension two to dimension n in dynamical systems. Eh? There are many, many uh, present day works on this, on this still uh, important subject, but uh, this goes uh, very, very, uh, very in, in, in directions difficult to, to, to follow. And uh, I take as motivation for the problem of increasing the dimension from two to higher, uh, the, the Landmark pa paper of Smail here. And Peixoto's work, of course, is a motivation for this 1980. Oops. Uh, uh, references concerning what I have said and what, and what was said here in, in the 1981, the 1981 opera. Aha. What is here? Opera, on the Two landmarks here, Smail. Okay. Sorry. The landmarks, the, the references. Uh, This is for vector fields. No? Especially, special attention should be given to the decondition, no? the, the, the difficult condition of recurrent orbits. No? This is a subject which uh, um, uh, Carlos Gutierrez uh, became a real expert in, in recurrences. No? So in, when we prepared his, his doctoral thesis, no? he, uh, he approached problems that, uh, where he had to penetrate really in these uh, questions of recurrence, né? and who are de very delicate in the, in the work of Peixoto. So the recurrence orbits, the closing lemma, this is Caballo. The battery is off. Peixoto's theorem is most familiar here. Conditions for structural stability. A, singular points, B, periodic orbits, C, absence of connections of separatrices, the transversality, and D, the absence of recurrences, no? non-trivial -trivia, recurrences, as, as they happen in the work of Gutierrez and Sotomayor here, and uh, that I, I was talking about, and this is the work that was presented in this meeting in 1981. We have the class S that I described first by Darbuxian, exat, et cetera, et cetera, Inclusi including the, th the, the, the all, all the class, no? What is the class C? Why do you focus on inertials and not on metrics on the surface? Sorry? Why do you focus on inertials and not on the metrics on the surface? Okay. You the because the immersion defines the two, the two forms. The matrix has only one form, and, and uh, the, the metric only has, uh, you can talk about geodesics, which, which is a second order differential equation of one higher level of complexity, even of what I am talking here. No? Uh, uh, it is uh, defined in the geodesic flow, which is in, in, in a three-dimensional manifold. No? Over, over each, each point on the surface, what do you have? You have a circle, the, or the tangent, unitary tangent, which is a three-manifold. And the, the the geodesics move on this three-dimensional manifold. No? It's a, a two-second-order equation. And this is a first-order equation, but two first-order equations. But they are separated. Uh, they are simpler than a geodesic study. So uh, to, to, to see how the, the surface is curved in itself, in, in itself no? this is a, 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 a very, very important and and uh, distinguished subject, no? uh, which is studied by Riemann, by Gauss, no? very high, high, high level uh, thought, uh, thinkers. No? And, and, uh, but uh, you need two forms to study principal structure. No? A, a one form, which is an internal measure, me me measure of, of, of distances, and a second form, which, which gives a Curvature, stress, or 
rarefaction, another, another uh, 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 how do you say, measure that is uh, a way that you, you notice when you see from uh, outside, when you see your surface from outside. You know? Either how it is curved, on which forces are acting on them, and then you have the stresses, the stress tensor. No? So uh, uh, this, this uh, principal theory, no? if you can call it a theory, it needs two, two, two fundamental forms, two forms. No? And the metric gives you only one form. So, so lines of curvature are not intrinsic? No, uh, uh, not at all. Uh, fortunately, they are not intrinsic. <laughs> this do, do not correspond to, to the Gaussian theory. It, it, it belongs to the Monge, Monge, Mongean theory. So uh, in a sense, this is the Mongean theory. No? And, uh, it it In, uh, in abstract terms, yes, you can you can look at the webs, no, as as, a, as an object. Uh, this is more. A, uh, of, of course, you can you can consider uh, uh, quadratic differentials also, no, in more abstract. Carlos Gutierrez, when he left IMPA, he he became fond of the abstract theory of quadratic differentials, quad quadratic differentials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, no? and, and we kept. Uh, I, I went to an applied mathematics <laughs> institute, no. And I, I, I kept my interest uh, going, going uh, more deeply in possibilities of application. So the stress tensor, the, the, no, the no, but I'm asking about this result. So ah. it's really used as a notion, or is just a, a structural stability of uncharged webs? Okay, no, 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 no. There, there is not, nothing like that, like a, a theory of stability for arbitrary two webs. The, the, it doesn't exist as such a theory. But I would like to. to to, to, I am uh, open to, to listening to references about this, but I don't know any, any theory about the uh, stability of two webs. And uh, what I, I can say that is that most of this theorem uh, that I'm talking, uh, differential geometries will uh, understand me, uh, you, and, and here in classical uh, theorem you have the the conditions of Kodasi and the conditions of Gauss to have classical geometry, as I, as I say. And most of the theory of principal configurations is uh, valid for Kodasi surfaces. That is a, a pair of forms, no? but you need a pair, you need two, which satisfy Kodasi integrability conditions. No? For instance, uh, I have written a, a little subject, a, a little paper, which says that uh, if you how, how, how do you measure? How do you measure the, the return map of a principal line? No? How do you measure how the derivative of this return map? No? Okay, so it, the, it, the, the, the foliation is differentiable, so there, it has a derivative, it has an allonomy. Okay, and so uh, the, the, the formula that, that we give in, in our papers is this. this the derivative of this return map you talk at this, with respect to S here, parameterized by arc length, S, sorry, is given by the exponential plus minus, it depends on the orientation of the integral of the differential of the mean curvature divided by the, the Gaussian curvature and mean curvature. Mean curvature, Gaussian curvature. Okay, so uh, so you have this differential form, and so uh, uh, this differential form really uh, can, can, you can prove this differential form, this 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 return map uh, uh, theorem, this return map formula, only uh, if you impose that you have a surface with two forms. If you have two forms, first and second, you can define this equation, so you have principal lines. No? And then you can study all, all that I mentioned. But uh, in, in general, this, how, how this derivative uh, of the return map depends, if it depends in, on what invariance. No? So I, I, not if it depends on the coordinates or not, no? if it is an intrinsic formula. So it is intrinsic in Kodasi surfaces. So it depends on the, 
first and second fundamental form, and you can prove this formula uh, only with the hypothesis of these two forms satisfy Kodasi integrability conditions. Because if it has satisfies Kodasi and Gauss, then it is a classical surface in, in Euclidean space. No? But if it, if it satisfies Kodasi, so it, it, you, maybe you cannot put in, in Euclidean space. But in, any, anyway, it is, a, it is a surface with some structure where you can study principal geometry. Principal geometry is this geometry that you obtain by taking this, integrating this, and taking the singularities and the periodic orbits. I don't know if I answered your question, Vittorio. Okay, <laughs> so, thank you. Sorry for being so, because I, it, 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 uh, it made, made, gave, gave me the opportunity to, to talk about something that I was not in my plans. Thank you for the question. More questions like that, welcome. Uh -huh. here, here is a, a, an artistic representation of principal configurations of one of the foliations. Now you have two. This and the orthogonal uh, foliation to this one gives you examples, pictorial examples of principal configurations on a piece of surface. Yeah? I must uh, say that uh, this, this is the red foliation. Now you see that you, you have uh, two circles, two, two, two cycles here. And then you have these lines that come from approaching the first cycle, external cycle, and the internal cycle. But uh, they have this, uh, this uh, advancing and returning. No, this is called as the refoliation. No? But uh, it, it is not known. Maybe, maybe some, someone can give me a, 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 glue, a link, a, a, a hint. No? Uh, this is, is an artistic picture. And uh, it is not known if this foliation exists as a principal foliation of an immersed surface. No? So if you have this surface and you say, I want this to be the principal foliation of an immersed surface, and I, I give you an immersion of this annulus into R3, whose, whose principal lines are given by this, these curves, no? then uh, this, this would prove that this exists as principal configuration. No? But this, this immersion is not known. Only the picture of the uh, theoretical uh, question. The red foliation is not known to, to exist. This is a torus. Uh, this is one of the first examples. Uh, this is a tricky, because in, in our paper with Gutierrez, we give examples of Torus immersed in R3, whose lines of curvature are dense. This is not dense. This is a, a, in mathematica, and all are principal. If you take the, the torus of revolution, you just see that the, the meridians and the parallels are lines of curvature, or are circles. And this torus also is, in, is in, obtained from mathematica, and the coordinate lines are already uh, circles. So this is only a principal configuration on a torus having all the curves closed. But we give in the in the paper, in the paper see here in the in the second paper, uh, uh, examples of immersions of the of the sphere with four umbilic points and dense lines of curvature. And then we give also ex immersions of torus of the torus into R3 with maximal lines dense, sort of ergodic. Later on, Gutierrez and myself, sorry, Garcia and myself, when, uh, and we give uh, immersions of, this, of the torus into R3 with both principal configurations, both principal lines dense, the maximal and minimal. This is one of the, of the books that, uh, in 209, uh, explaining this, this uh, uh, principal uh, configuration theory and other extensions also, like the principal configurations of immersions of M2 into 
R4. No, this is, is in my list of, of uh, for this course today as uh, something that also Gutierrez worked in, in the immersions of M2 in R3, immersions of surface into four dimensional space. And how this surface is curved in this space, and this depends also on the second fundamental form, which is a vectorial form. And uh, I, 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 if there is time, I, would, uh, I, I don't want to, to be too, too pushy. Uh, how, how this comes on? No? This is a, a reedition of the book uh, published in the Brazilian Mathematical Colloquium on. 1991. 1990, 1981 was the papers. Uh, 1992, there was this little book explaining this, these papers and uh, among other things also, more, more uh, didactic uh, presentation. There is the, the IMPA edition, and this is the IMCA edition with some addition uh, on, on references, more, more updated references. I, I will not, I, 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 here is the, the procedure to, co to consider this, this example of an ellipsoidal surface is uh, constructed deforming Monge ellipsoid with different axes, so to produce, to produce dense lines of curvature. And this is more, uh, here, all, all the formula here in the, from the paper, I am reproducing them. I, I will not go into this, and this is, the, the, the soul of, of a, a circle and a torus, a tubular neighborhood of this circle, depending on the, on the height of this, uh, the height of this uh, P of this, of this plane, no? uh, you, you prove that when this row moves, the lines of curvature moved also and become dense or periodic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is a, an interesting example, I think, because it, it, uh, this formula of return, this, this formula that I, I was explaining here, the return of the, of the circle, so here what I'm talking about a, a, a torus, no? the tubular neighborhood of this, of this, of this uh, closed curve is a torus. No? And in the boundary of this torus, solid torus, and the boundary, there is lines of curvature principle, and, and so this return and have a rotation number. And how, how can you cal compute this rotation number? No? And this rotation number depends only on the curvature of the soul, in, soul center of the curve, no? the torsion of the torsion, not of the torsion, the torsion. So you need some piece here. The, the, geomet the geometry of this example is interesting. You need here is like a, like a, like an ellip ellipsoidal. The torsion of this, the four is zero everywhere, zero. Uh, here is zero because it is in this plane. And, but he, here it moves and must climb here, and here it, it, it has a, a piece of helicoidal, of helix, helix? Yes, a, a piece of helix, and the helix has non-trivial torsion. No, it moves. <coughs> and we, we prove here that from this curve, you can produce immersions of the torus into R3 which have dense lines of curvature. This, this, uh, these examples were essential for uh, this paper because uh, uh, up to that moment, there were no, no, not known these examples. Another interesting thing also was the proof of, of Darboux theorem for surfaces of class C4. No? Now we come to this uh, transition here. So, uh, what happened between 1981 and 19, uh, let me clean a little bit. What is my, my reference of uh, Ronaldo Garcia got lost here. Let me make, sorry for the confusion here. Aha, here is. Uh, here is, he study M3 into R4, immersions. 
immersions of a manifold into R4. And you want to describe also you have the normal Okay, so, uh, so this is the extension in one dimension. So, and uh, uh, what happened in, in, in between? No? There were, uh, this is, uh, and uh, in between we studied the, the bifurcations, how, how this uh, here, the bifurcations, of how these four conditions break down. Because uh, when one of these surfaces is deformed, this defines the, the formation parameter is one dimensional, and the surface is in three dimensions. And the surface moving in three dimensions, you can represent in four dimensions. So the, the, very, the very structure of surfaces, and here you have a cylinder over a surface, M3. And here you have R3, R, R3 across a line. So uh, these simple examples of bifurcation that we studied along this, this period yeah, uh, was uh, important for the formulation of the uh, theory of uh, principal curvature directions, principal configuration, principal curvature lines in uh, Surfaces of dimension three, manifolds of dimension three, immersed in four space. Mm. Let me go in, in, in pictorically here, because uh, here is where things are beginning to get messy in the formula. Eh? It's easy to, 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 to guess. No? The second fundamental form divided by the first fundamental form, this is the, the normal curvature. And then uh, the eigenvalues of this curvature are the curvatures. And then you are interested in how uh, this, these two curvatures coincide. Yeah? These are the, the um, partial umbilic points. If all the curvatures coincide, which is a very, very rare situation, of if all of them coincide, this is a very, very special situation that does not exist generically. Well, uh, about the mathematics, and here is the, the first time we, we, we write the formula of, of a, how, how you compute the conditions of Darboux. Eh? You, you, you must uh, cal com compute how the, how the Darboux and conditions behave eh? to, to see what is D1, D2, because now, now these points are moving. And you must know when D1 is moving to D2, or on when D2 is crossing with D3, how this, this move. Uh, occurs, how this cancellation or deformation occurs. Yeah? So you, you cannot uh, only uh, proceed drawing pictures, you, you can draw the pictures, but you need also to write equations. So these are characterization, analytical characterization of the category, D1, D2, and D3 of Darboux. Yeah? There is a transversality condition I can, I can, I, it's interesting to see how these conditions behave. T, a transversality condition, sorry for this confusion. And D are the really Darboxian conditions. The transversality condition means the following geometrically. Means that this surface, when you take this limit toward this umbilic line, this limit do not have singularities. This is really a smooth surface. And being a smooth surface, you can study differential equations on it. The, the, the degeneracy of this uh, singularity, this transversality condition, uh, leads you to the theory where this uh, principal surface on, on the projective bundle has singularities. And this makes the problem more difficult. So, so this is a transverse, in terminology, this is the transversality condition and really the Darboxian condition. I will go a little bit fast here because this is how the how the conditions change. No? The, the, the umbilics of dimension one. No? This is D2, and D2, what happens with D3? D, D, you have uh, a central direction. I, I will not discuss this uh, geometrically. Ma mainly, I, I will say how this collapses with this. This is D2. Generically, uh, it bifurcates by collapsing with a D3. And collapsing in D3, you produce 
a B two three one, and this is like a southern node. It has a, the, the the analogous of the southern node when you collapse a, a node and a southern in differential equation. So it's B two three bifurcation. This is not in the list of star rule, but appears in 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 the pictures. Uh, given by Gullstrand without, without analysis, mathematical analysis. Gullstrand was a physician that uh, uh, obtained the Nobel Prize for physiology because he studied the focalization of the uh, lenses of the human eye. He studied the aberrations of the, of the, of the human life uh, uh, sight uh, in terms of umbilic points and focus. Analysis, and, and here is the surface that I was uh, attempting to draw here. Uh, the corresponding to each D1, and this is what I, I attempted to draw here, D1. See, D2 and D3. So this is important if you want to go into, this is D23, where the, the, the surface here that I, I was talking loses the transversality condition and the surface already, uh, this, this surface here, this limit, has singularities. This is a con conic singularity. It has cones here. And uh, the analysis is much more difficult. Uh, here's the bifurcation. This conic singularity separates in two sheets. The translation into, <laughs> into PowerPoint uh, uh, misses the other condition. So, uh, so here is, uh, I, I will finish here with uh, the line of partial umbilic points. So you have three, con three curvatures, K1, K2, and K3. Generically, only two of them coincide. Never coincide the three of them. This is a higher degeneracy phenomenon. And when two coincide, this defines a curve. This curve defines, this is what I am drawing here, and along this curve, transversal to this curve, you have one of these Darboxian uh, structures. But this is not a, a, a product of Darboxian structures. This keep changing. And the foliation de defined by the, the line, the field of lines, P, uh, L1, L2, corresponding to K1 and K2 curvatures, are not in general integrable to have a, a field of surfaces. Eh? Uh, generically, these are not integrable. So uh, the analysis of the transversal structure to this curvature line of partial umbilic points is, is uh, technically difficult. Here is an analysis. I, I will, this is uh, uh, with, two, with two parameters. With so uh, I, I say uh, I, I finish saying, saying the, uh, how 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 this is, is carried out and wh why? Eh? Because these bifurcations of this uh, study here, uh, carried out in this direction, uh, appear in this problem of M3 into R4. In the problem of M4 into R5, appear the deformations of immersions of M3 into R4. So there is an induction. So uh, if you want to make a, an analogy, I, 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 I will end with e here, of the theory of generic vector fields in two-dimensional manifolds, no? so the, the kupke semel theorems, the, uh, the vector fields. Eh? In three-dimensional manifolds, the generic vector fields are also the kupke semel, the same kupke semel are for all the dimensions. So here, in each dimension, your Kupke smell depends on the dimension. So you keep ex 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 extending the definition. Because uh, in, 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 in three dimensions, the, the umbilic points are not, are not points anymore. They define curves. No? And so you have to study the structure of the line fields along this curve. And along this curve, you have mostly Darboxian points. And then you have transitions from Darboxian points of one type into other points. Let me, let me stop here, but I, I want to project one, one slide at the end of the acknowledging. So this is M4 in, in, in R5. 
the umbilic points for half dimension two. But I, I want to start uh, the, the <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. okay, thank you for the question. <laughs> so this is the study of the case M2 into R4, where you have the ellipse of curvature, right? And, and the, lapse, the ellipse of curvature, you want to study how, how you uh, are away from the center of the ellipse of curvature, which is the mean curvature. So, so this is, uh, the, the, the procedure uh, goes on. Let, let me project two, two last slides because uh, uh, it explains why I am here. Aha, I, I will not discuss it. This is, this is what would happen in the other case where the, the cone changes connectivity. No? You see the, the cone the, uh, uh, separates or makes holes by bifurcation. Eh? Aha, okay, here is conclusion. <laughs> uh, I, I read this yeah, and I will finish the Google. Uh, we stop here with the feeling that there is much more to say about Carlos Gutierrez, his time and mathematical work. Toward uh, 8th of December, 10 years after his premature passing away, remembering his mathematical legacy, we intend to coordinate a series of lectures online connecting people who are presently studying his work and they are now attending this lecture. Hello, people. Uh, at least seven, seven centers in, in, in Brazil and in Mexico and in, in, in Chile may be attending, one in, in, in Hungary also, attending this lecture. And then here is acknowledgement. I am grateful to those who made possible this lecture. First, Alita Gibi from ICMC, USP, for inviting me to deliver a recorded lecture about Gutierrez's contributions that uh, recorded lecture, I, I hope this is being recorded because the, 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 these people from IICMC I, I, distribute the Gutierrez Award for the best, what they consider the best thesis in mathematics. So uh, they, they will have a special ceremony for this edition, this year edition of the award. Uh, and they want to discuss the work of Gutierrez in other, other lines, other fields. I am talking one, only one specific field and what happened before and what happened after. Uh, so uh, I want to thank Garcia and De Melo uh, for their helpful comments and editing suggestions. So this is uh, who helped me to, when my hard disk broke down, to help me to pass from uh, spread PDFs into PowerPoints with mistakes, but uh, uh, almost, almost, uh, almost uh, readable slides and colleagues or, and staff members of FIMPA also I am very grateful to, for their support and help to Yusen, Alfredo Yusen, Emmanuel Carneiro, Gugu, for his patience, and Dion and his, his uh, team of workers, of, of as, as assistants, and Sueli Mayato, I don't know what is her, her name now, Palis, no? Sueli Palis, uh, among others, because <laughs> this changes, it's like bifurcations, <laughs> change very, very quickly. So thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question from Alita Zib, indeed. But he, he asks, yes. So he asks, what do you expect for ergodic theory of these flows? I expect a lot of things, a lot of things. So uh, to, to, I, I answer with uh, uh, the words of, uh, of Poincaré. To predict the future, you must first know his, its state of the art, present state of the art, and its history. And from this data, you extrapolate and uh, attempt to talk about the future. So that's my advice. Thank you. Yeah, I have a final question. So uh, uh, for, for two-dimensional uh, flows in general, there is are this theorem by Peixoto and others, yes. so typically the systems are uh, structurally stable. Mm -hmm. But this is no longer true in, di in dimension three. So, uh, f so for, for fields in di dimension three. Yeah. But in this context, do you also expect that 
structurally stable configurations are not genetic in dimension larger than two, or, or is the situation oh, for instance, different? Uh, page, uh, on, on the other hand, that there are contexts, for instance, for geodesic flows, structurally stable, still genetic in any dimension. So uh, what, what do you expect in general? For instance, in, in dimension, so for uh, three-dimensional manifolds immersed in R4, so okay, what do you expect? What, what, um, Ab about genericity of structural stability. What, no, structural stability, Pro, uh, probably it's not generic, but uh, what uh, uh, Garcia is studying this work, and I uh, still still studying uh, uh, upgrades of this work. He studied the Kupke Smail uh, immersions, and already the Kupke Smail immersions uh, uh, will change with the dimension. You see, Kupke Smail in dimension two and Kupke Smail in dimension three are the same qualitatively. You can the same formulation is given but the complexity of the of the immerse of the of the principal structure when you increase the dimension uh, 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 include uh, besides uh, umbilic points which form curves periodic orbits which are circles and you have to study the return map they are must be hyperbolic and you must have formulae also for the for this hyperbolicity, no? this formula analogous to this, which is a very, very uh, uh, tricky, tricky question to have the return map expressed. And now you have other things that that uh, are not in present in traditional dynamical systems, which is the D1 D1 connection, no? because uh, the D1 D1 connection. is like a segment which is accumulated by orbits. No? So when, when, when you have the line of partial umbilic points, one line, one line moves here and carries it. It's, it's separatrix, it's like this. And other line moves like here and carries it separatrix, moves like this. And they cross here. And this crossing is persistent. So around this crossing, there is a return map that uh, is more singular than the return map of a periodic orbit. Mm -hmm. And so this being a return map, it has invariant manifolds. So you must to include, in, in your Kupke Smail study, you must to include also this return map and its invariant manifolds and make it transversal to other manifolds. So uh, uh, the very, the very uh, structure of the of the interesting, of the essential, uh, main, mainly in, in unavoidable uh, uh, dynamical st structure of the, of the, of the system uh, is increasing in complexity with the dimension. So uh, to understand this, this uh, subject uh, is really something that is uh, a work in progress. Uh, the theory of principal uh, structures is in the beginning of its, its, its stage. Sorry, Manuel. Yeah. <laughs> 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 